Welcome back to the Whiskey and Wisdom Podcast, everybody. This is your co-host, Tyler Yall, and today I am with Chris Kellum. And our two special guests today are... Kayla Coyne. Hi. Anna. And I'm John Coyne. Thank you so much for coming on today. Appreciate you. Thank you. Before we go Thank crazy you. and go too deep into it, what did you pick to drink today? I have a mocktail. Yep. Nice. I let the bartender take her creative artiste her artwork and then just make me something special without the alcohol today nice. not again like not that i don't drink but yeah, I, I like right. to do the celebratory drinks only so taking it back a notch which has been very nice yeah. we were talking about that earlier today mm-hmm. like yeah. we obviously with a whiskey podcast we drink a lot uh, <laughs> but we we've we've toned it down a little bit so both of us tend to drink on podcast days and then we'll have mm-hmm. a few drinks throughout the month but not as much as we did in year one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Had to learn how to tone that back. So. Yeah, it takes a while. It takes a while. Yeah, exactly. Some balance in the life, right? Yes. Yeah. I'm sure the excitement of wanting to do your podcast. You yeah. Know, right. Yeah. Up. Helped you want to drink a little more. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the part of it, too, is like you go to a bar and like you drink a few drinks like over a couple hours and you're just talking and you don't really have to like pay attention to anything too much. And then you just grab an Uber home type of thing. You don't worry about it. But when you're hosting a podcast... You have to worry about it a little bit more, and you have to worry about how it's going to sound when it comes out after post. So Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. There were a few that we had drank a little too much. <laughs> yeah, they're out there, too. I think we, we tailored it. Yeah, lessons and, learned. Uh, I'll go yeah. find them. I'll dig for them. I'll find those. <laughs> um, I love those things. But, reverse words. Question I've been asking everybody randomly today, before we got dive deep into yourself. If you had a, a walk-up song, like in sports and baseball and whatnot, like when it's like, oh, hey, introducing, and there's a song playing, what would that be? You got to think about it. Well, I, I want to think about it really hard, but then the first one that comes to my mind is something that was playing earlier today, and it's like, oh, here she comes. What is that song? Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm, like, and I'm just <laughs> getting it. You know? <laughs> it's, it's the first one I thought of. So. Hey, it works. I like I like the John Cena, like when he comes oh, out his to his. intro music? Yeah. Like, bum, 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 bum. Whatever, I forget what I was song saying, I don't that, know that is, song. but yeah, it's right, hype, exactly. and it gets me going every single time, and I love John Cena. So, Are yeah. you sad he's retiring next year? You know, that is the very unfortunate news, but, you know, he's he's done his job. I, I feel like say, he's yeah. been on this earth for good reason. He's done really good yes. by people, giving people happiness, and he's he's really good in um, philoth- philanthropic yeah. Um, yeah. things that he does, and you know, he does things with uh, Make-A-Wish a lot, so... That's right. He's like the number one requested make a wish. <laughs> no way. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, That's like, crazy. You know, the guy I can never see, I would love to see him one time because that's his thing. So he can't hard. see me. That's true. It's hard Sorry. to see him. <laughs> <laughs> so silly. So I like it. before I go off track, tell us a little bit about yourselves. Okay. Well, about, about uh, me, right? You, you come yeah. up here and... Honestly, I, I, when I talk in front of people or when I have conversations about me or, mm-hmm. you know, my own thoughts, my own creativity, it's usually when people are in child's pose or in down dog. You know, <laughs> I teach yoga. And so it's either that or either I'm behind a screen. I work remote. Yeah. Right. So getting out there and talking in front of people, especially about myself mm-hmm. with my own words is is new. And I, I went to a poetry night not long ago like a week or two ago. Shout out Izzy with Mike's Wide Open. He does that at the Painter and the Poet. It's amazing. But I got out in front of people and started talking with my own words, my own emotions, and everyone's just staring at me. And I'm like, whew, this is different. (laughs) This is so different. So to just talk about yourself, you're like, okay, where do I start? Yeah. Well, I was born, you know, where (laughs) I was born. And you go through your past and you kind of plan this. Like, how, How do I talk about myself? And I'm like, man, I look at my past and I'm like, well, let's skip that part, <laughs> skip that part. And let's just get straight into where I am right now, okay. like yeah. where I am right now. And I feel like um, I'm at this place where uh, business, right? We're here to also talk about business, yeah. where my business has never really felt like mine. Mm. And I've always been a part of an organization. Like I've always mm. been a part of something, a team or a sport, or just just so many things that I've tried, especially through movement, 
motocross growing up, soccer, competitive cheerleading, you as well, competitive cheerleading, bodybuilding, dance, volleyball, basketball, all of it, right? I've always been part of this organization. And then I go and join the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. I did a little bit of college here and there, but then I go and join the Marine Corps, a big organization. Very big. Right? And straight out of that organization, I go and join, I get out after spending five years and I join another organization, which is a big hospital. I do data analytics, enterprise resource planning for finance, supply chain, HR, all of their data process and automation, IT. I love numbers. Mm -hmm. So I've always been a part of this organization. Mm Mm-hmm. And so I feel like right now where I am, I'm at this peak point. And I feel like some people, a lot of people, they reach that peak point where their business is separate from their passion project. Mm -hmm. And so my passion project is turning into my business. It's, it's becoming one and it's, it's really beautiful. I, I feel like I'm in this transformative place right now. And I, I absolutely love the the transition that has has been happening it's been really beautiful but my purpose or my passion project is turning pain into purpose Mm -hmm. and it's been years of me trying to take this passion project and figure out how do do i define it right well turning pain into purpose i teach yoga it's my, I like to say my side job. It's the, it's the other side of the organization, right? right? Yeah. I teach yoga and I'm not the typical yoga teacher that's all happy rainbows and butterflies and things are great. That's not, just, that's not how life is. Mm-hmm. And I teach from a place where pain recognizes pain. Mm-hmm. Like I, I have, we all have a past. Mm-hmm. We all have very painful parts of our lives and I feel like as a yoga teacher, it's, it's our job, it's my job to hold the space for other people so they can navigate where they are in that moment mm-hmm. and navigate their pain and try to work through that to find some type of balance. Yeah. I like that. That's neat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. Power and pain. Finding the power in it. Mm-hmm. So finding the power in your pain. Yeah. Yeah. It's finding really the power in, in the pain and where you were t- turning that pain literally into purpose and finding out who you are and why you are. Oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. So how do you do that specifically while doing yoga? Turning pain into purpose. I feel like it is, it's never linear. So there's not, there's not pain and then you fix it. It's, right. it's going to be up and down, just like the flow of life. It's up and down. Recognizing what pain that you are self-inflicting, what pain is happening to you day by day it is honestly day by day and going through that and I believe for me specifically just learning about or speaking on my experience movement has been a big part of that Mm -hmm. and moving through that knowing that pain it comes in very many forms and it can get stuck and stored in the body it can pain can become from an accident a car accident some kind of injury pain can come from grief or loss pain can also come from trans tra- transitioning out of roles yeah, so yeah. while in the military i played a role and i recognize right. that as a sergeant of the united states marine corps i recognize that i chose to play a role mm-hmm. and some people they don't choose that you know some the people, people that don't. came before me in that role they were made to go in they were made right. to enlist and so there's a role that i played And there's a saying in the Marine Corps, once a Marine, always a Marine. And I Mm -hmm. love that, but there's always a but, right? That role can become them. That can Mm -hmm. take on their life, and that's the person that they are, and that there's no separation in that person and that role they played. Although an honorable role, when you get out, there's a transitional period. And what happens when you transition, um, there's growing pains. Mm Mm-hmm. And that growing pains also comes in the form of not knowing where you are, where you are as a person, what's your next step? What do I, what, what do I go from here? What do I do? And who, who am I now? Mm-hmm. I'm not this person. And maybe they still think, they mean, that's, that's who they yeah. are. But they have to separate, learn to separate, learn the tools that they need to separate a role versus who they are and why they're here. Yeah. So, so one of our mutual friends, Catherine, mm-hmm. also military as well, ex-military, yes. when she got out, the way that she described it to me is 
she was used to SOPs in the military and that's how you run your life and that's how it's based and that that's what you do every single day. And if you're listening, SOP, Standard Operating Procedure. Yeah. And so for you or for her when she got out, she needed to find her SOP outside of the military. Is that something that you had to go through as well or was it something completely different that you had to experience? Yes, everyone's transition period is different. Just speaking from any anyone that's transitioning right. from the Marine Corps, but transition happens throughout everyone's yeah. life. Whether you're enlisted or you're in the military or not, transition is going to happen because mm -hmm. change is inevitable. But yes, I, I'm glad that you mentioned that. It is like finding your own SOP, and it can take years. Right. It can literally take years. I remember having one of the worst years of my life, being in a very dark place where my heart felt like dark and heavy. And if you've ever felt like that, it is not a good place to be. My mind was playing tricks on me, right? And, and I remember standing in the kitchen and I, my husband loves me so much. Thank you so much for being there for me. But he looked at me and had no idea what to say. But all he could do was say his truth, what he knew to be true. He said, happy people sing and happy people dance. And even if I didn't want to, like if I, every boundary was up in my body, everything was just not having it, mm -hmm. right? But I started from that moment just making myself sing and making myself dance. So I remember us grabbing hands in the kitchen and just dancing. Yeah. And it was absolutely, to this day, we still <laughs> dance in the kitchen and it makes kitchen things better. If we argue, <laughs> let's clean the house together and let's dance in the kitchen. And yeah. so that <laughs> has really changed the trajectory of, my life of our lives and where we're we are literally at right now and what we're doing with the community yeah mm -hmm. so talk about that a little bit more about what you're doing now because there's, there's a new project that's happening right there's um a few projects yes, yes yes so in that passion project in that transitional period there's an organization that had been set up when i met john he had already been throwing events so he's been doing this for 10 years he he started with this business create and it's Create Music Art mm -hmm. online. You can find it on Instagram yeah. and whatnot. He has a website. But Create Music Art. And so he threw music events, mostly electronic music, through there. And over the past what, six months to a year, he's been building this project with the electronic community here. Oh, and yeah. so you'll see electronic music events happening around town. So many more than they used to I was be. Gonna say, yes. Yeah. They're, the community right now is on fire. They're thriving. People are wanting this type of music. Mm -hmm. And where I come in, him and I knew at some point we would both be ready to put our skills together, put our passions together, and make something really beautiful about what we both love. Bringing people together over music mm -hmm. and also teaching yoga and incorporating that music for some sort of healing. Mm. And so the project that we are starting this week, actually, on Tuesday, oh, nice. it's called Frequency Yoga. And it's where you can come in. It's an hour and a half experience where you come in and you find your place on your mat. You do a yoga practice. But for the last 30 minutes of it is more of a sound system bath mm. where you are in this a shavasana, like you're in this resting yeah. pose, and you're you're hearing the base of this high fidelity sound system. It's a function one sound system mm -hmm. where you are literally feeling this through the body, feeling it from the ground up through the floor, and playing binaural beats. So you have a sense of a frequency, like a different hertz. And I can let John speak on this more. That moves through the body. That helps those those places that are stuck within you. That pain, those pain points. Yeah. yeah. It helps remove those and bring them out of the body. You want to speak more on that? Yeah. So with with binaural beats and solfeggio frequencies, as some people may know them, is is it tunes into a certain frequency of hertz, and usually that aligns with a, a feeling of evocation of emotion. Mm -hmm. Usually, it, whenever you see somatics happen within, what that is, somatics is like the pattern of which sound makes when it goes through like a liquid or yeah, like right. if you okay. ever see people on YouTube will do this. They'll put like a little bottle cap with water yeah. in it and then they'll shine light on it. And then right below that is a, is a subwoofer mm -hmm. and they'll play certain frequencies through that subwoofer. And you'll see in that bottle cap, all these different patterns and all these different formations that are, you know, are that happen in natural given life. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of really cool to see that, like how yeah. cell structures happen how different different patterns will occur in, in natural life. But what that will do is, I think, you know, with us being made of 
pretty much water, <laughs> mm-hmm. we'll be sitting here feeling and experiencing these frequencies. And within us, they'll, you know, these patterns and these sacred ge- geometric type of frequencies will come into you and you'll kind of feel those and hopefully pain will come, come out of it. Hopefully some healing will come out of it. And when you release like that, I also teach my fascial release classes. So it's also oh, yeah. targeting pain and inflict mm-hmm. kind of inflicting pain yeah, on the right. self so you can release and mm-hmm. literally restore from the inside out. And it's kind of the same, the same with this frequency yoga. Yeah. Some people will walk in and they, they won't know where they're at in that moment. They yeah. don't know what they're holding on to, but some kind of emotion does come up. Mm-hmm. And uh, unless they know what to do with that, when it comes up, it can be a weird place to the, in, in the practice that way. But our, what we're here to do is simply hold the space for people and explain it. And when we explain it and hold space, it's the student's job or it's the person that's experiencing is their job to navigate it. But as a community, as we bring people together, we, we know that we can't navigate this life on our own. It, right. it must yeah. be together. So that's yes. the community that we're bringing together. So we have the music events. We have this community that's so beautiful, that's building and growing. And now it's time to bring healing into, into that it. community. Yeah. yeah. So when did you start kind of getting involved in the music space and what was the transition period from that into the healing part of the music? Because I, I would assume it's two separate yeah. pieces, right? So, I mean, I've been I've been presenting events, like she's saying, for over 10 years, 14 yeah. years to be exact. Wow. She's started her yoga journey how long ago? It was right, at, right after I got out of the Marine Corps. So 2014 I started. Okay. And then it was it took one compliment. Someone said, oh, are you are you a teacher? And I was like, no, I'm not a teacher. What are you talking about? <laughs> and so it took one one person. One compliment can change your entire life. Yeah. But I, I was like, man, I, I should be teaching. I do have a story to tell. I have a voice to use and I'm going to I'm going to use it. And so right. I started teaching actually in Greensboro 2000, what, 17, 18? Around, around a, f- yeah. a few years ago, before before COVID, right? That's how yeah. our time works right <laughs> exactly. now, before COVID yeah. and after COVID. <laughs> and then so through sad. COVID, taught here, but online into my neighborhood because we couldn't get in person. And then now I, I teach at Yoga Salt. Oh, yeah. And on the pier. I saw that. Yeah, the Oceanic yeah. Pier. I, yes. That is beautiful. I'm out there every Friday. Yeah, 7.30 to 8.30. It's absolutely beautiful way to start your weekend. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we, we knew that there was going to be a time where – I was ready, and he was he was also ready with it. Yeah, back in Greensboro, I did I hosted like a DJ. It was like a DJ and a yoga class, but it wasn't oh, okay. necessarily like at the end where we did like a sound healing journey as well. But that was probably I'd say like four years ago. But me, Kayla and I, we've always known that we wanted to do something together in this in this regard. We have been doing something in this regard about for a year now called mm-hmm. Wilmington Ascetic Dance, which okay, yeah. Yeah, which is a meditative dance. I'll let Kayla yeah, touch in on it. Yeah, ecstatic dance. And this is like the where I was talking about where my my organization, uh, my business side is meeting my passion project. Right. And ecstatic dance is a huge part of that. I told my story about, you know, happy people sing and happy mm-hmm. people dance. And so we went to Costa Rica. We like to go to music festivals. Yeah. Love music festivals. But Costa Rica, there's a there's a festival out there called Envision, and they do ecstatic dance, which is um, a healing dance. It's sober, family-friendly, and that's kind of what we brought back here. Okay. And there was already a small group of people that were doing it, but no organization to it. And I think a lot of people were trying, they're moving around and um, not sure if they were going to stay in town. And so we had the music events already happening and our, the resources already there, and we have the passion and the drive. And so we stepped into it. Yeah. And are building it and it's still happening. It's still growing. And over the past year, we've seen a spike of, of interest and just, just a beautiful change of how the community is coming together. And again, just holding space for people. So yeah. having the, the container for people to show up and experience what ecstatic dance is, that sober family friendly, friendly place where w- there's no talking really on the dance floor. Yeah. And sometimes we'll do like a cacao ceremony or you can b- buy a cacao if that's something that you're interested in. Right. But when you arrive, it's more, it is definitely to build the community and just to be there for one another, but also to release just in the right. same way that you're going to release in a myofascial release class, just the same ways you're going to release in this frequency yoga, but a container for people to release. And then if you want to share afterwards and talk about it afterwards, that's mm-hmm. what we do. And some of that 
just to witness where people are in life is so healing. It is like therapy, J just like the open mic and seeing other people's experience through words. That is therapy. It is therapeutic to sit and talk to people in a circle after. Mm -hmm. There's something just so, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Tribal and about sitting in a circle with your community and saying, this is what's going on. This is me being vulnerable. And even if you don't speak, you're holding space for someone else in the circle yep. so they can speak. And you right. take on some of that so they don't have to take it all on, on themselves. And all that's right. that's what's important. And that's why we do this. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. I, f I feel like you guys have the ability in offering that option for people. Like holding that space is not something that I s I've seen very much. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that it's like becoming more of a thing and there's more options and availability for people to kind of like do what they need to do yeah, I think in a so. safe space. Exactly. And I think, I think it's been a big change in my life to be able to do that and to offer that to people because I've, I've been quite the opposite and I know we've seen other, other people and we've witnessed other leaders that are, that are stepping up and they are there to control a space. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's how right. they present themselves. They're, I'm here to control the space. And right. you know those leaders. Yep. Right? I've, I, yep. I have taken on a lot of the observance and the, the witnessing of what the military has taught me mm -hmm. more on the leaderships. Like, how, what did you get from the Marine Corps? What did yep. you get? I've got strength. I've got, you know, organization. I've got, you know, presence. But I've also right. got this, this idea of what leadership should be and shouldn't be. And mm -hmm. you take and leave what you need to, mm -hmm. but in, in learning that, that's where this has become, you know, an option for us. It's not just about controlling a space. It's not something that we are, okay, we're here to do this, come and do this. It's all about us and the money and just come. We are here to offer and hold space, mm -hmm. yeah. not to control a space or make it feel like it's so organized, but fluid. Right. Yeah. What I've noticed from talking to other people who practice yoga on here as well and then outside of the podcast is there's usually some type of spiritual aspect to it. Mm -hmm. So what I like to ask anyone who um, practices that is what's your spiritual aspect to and for yoga? I think I, I'm just going to be very vulnerable with this. This is what <laughs> this is for. I think that I went away from God for a while. I grew up in a Christian household, mm -hmm. and I don't think I got it. You know, I don't yeah. think I understood. And I think yoga for me opened up the space for me to learn how to pray. Oh, yeah. And it, yeah. it, it, it taught me how to manifest. It taught me how to meditate, mm -hmm. and it taught me how to pray. And it's been a very beautiful experience that I can come back to again, through movement and release, but also discipline. I mean, yeah. it, it's a whole different aspect of military discipline versus yoga discipline. This is discipline of the mind yeah. and reaction. So I'm, I'm coming from a place where I'm doing yoga, but then taking my practice off of the mat and pausing and breathing in a different way. I'm moving mm. in a different way and thinking in a different way so I can react to be a better person, not just for myself, but for my family. I can be a better person for my son. I can be a better person for everyone that I come in contact with. Mm -hmm. How about for yourself? So similar aspect of Kayla, I was brought up in a non-denominational church. I actually went to a Episcopalian all-boy boarding school when oh, I was wow. in high school, which was interesting yeah. to say the least as <laughs> sure. well. And fun. <laughs> um, but I would say as I grew up, I kind of experienced life a little bit in the, in the way of of saying, like, love is kind of the source of, of God godliness. Yeah. And I think treating others with that love, with unconditional love, and no matter how anybody treats you, coming back with that, you know, love in mind, I think that's, like, ultimately, like, my spiritual path of enlightenment and mm. trying to help others heal, too, is you know, helping people recognize the love within themselves and also how to, you know, steer away from the negative dark energy. So and I sometimes it, that's it, not it, easy. Yeah. And it's right. like lo love is not, it's not easily, it's not easily learned. Mm -hmm. If you're not taught it, mm -hmm. it's not easily learned. And I, I'm going to side quest here for a second. Love. I can remember the first time that I ever chose love. 
And I was in my early 20s, and it's shocking. Early 20s, I chose love. Yeah. I remember sitting in my career planner, my monitor's office. It's the person that helps you transition while you're in the Marine Corps, not right. transition out. Nobody really helps you transition <laughs> out. <laughs> right. This is no. That is an inside job, fellas. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> transition while you're in. I'm sitting in there. I was getting out, so I t- did five years while I was in, five and three. So I was sitting in his office, and there was um, my paperwork that I had signed for my re-enlistment. Mm-hmm. And at this time, people were getting kicked out left and right. Like, you're getting kicked out of the military for little things. It is all about who you are. It is, yeah. even in, you know, the outside civilian world, it is yes. all about who you are. So focus on yourself and then go for your dreams. But mm-hmm. I'm sitting there with my re-enlistment package signed. I had a bonus, and I also got to pick my duty station. And I'm going to brag on myself for yeah. a bit. I'm, yeah. I'm going to brag. Either I have proud moments of me being in the Marine Corps. I had my staff sergeant, my gunny, and my first sergeant with high recommendations that I get what I wanted out awesome. of my reenlistment. Right. And they said, well, let's get, let's get 24 hours on this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's get 24 hours on this because I see that you have a dependent. And my dependent was three years old. My son was three at the time. So 24 hours go by and I go back into his office and he said, well, you can, you can do all of it. You can go to the drill field. You can go to your duty station. You can get your bonus, all of it, but your son can't go with you. And in that moment I knew like, I, I mean, those were my dreams. I, the drill field was my dream. I was born for that. In my mind, I was born for that. Very different person from me teaching yoga 100%. <laughs> Catch me a few I years ago. <laughs> this, he would have hated me. He would have hated right. me. <laughs> Make it, yeah. Right. yeah. Proud moments and not so proud moments, but yeah. lessons learned. But I, I remember in that moment that the only decision was to get out. And not that I had any plans for myself. Not, not really anyways. Mm-hmm. But I knew that I had to move back from the West Coast to the East Coast, back home to North Carolina. And... Just be with my son because my son didn't deserve a mom that was gone. Mm -hmm. And so that was the first time that I can remember choosing love. And ever since then, I I knew in the moment whether I was choosing love or not. Mm. You just know. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I I do think that it takes people a while to learn what, what, what showing love is and what receiving love is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Understanding that too. Mm -hmm. The source of, of God, spiritualism, you know, spirituality and, you know, coming to terms with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel so, like, good. I feel like that's one thing that unfortunately parents don't always teach their children mm-hmm. or like, it's not something you have to teach them, but showing them so that way they can accept it in the future. They don't, they don't know kinda, how. Yeah. And it's yeah. not, I don't know. I, you can't blame them. You can't blame right. them. No, you can't blame anybody it. because you don't know who taught them. Yeah, exactly. Or maybe yeah. you do know who taught them and then maybe some grace is supposed to be given there. But, but yeah, and, and the way they show love is going to be different than the way we show love to other mm-hmm. people and to our kids. Mm-hmm. And as much as some of us are like, oh, I don't want to be like my parents or I do want to be just like them, there's going to be aspects that you take away from your parents, whether good or bad, but you ultimately choose how yeah. you want to show and receive love. Yes. Yeah. So at that moment when you decided to choose that love, was there something that was kind of like pulling you back like ah that was everything I ever wanted but I know this is the right way to go or was it completely like all right this clearly wasn't meant to be then or was it like a kind of like a pull back and forth oh it was a pull it was a pull there was no real back and forth because I made it it was an immediate decision Mm -hmm. but I was so excited about what I had just done I I mean to sign a re-enlistment package and to have it to let them, to have them say, you can rip it up the next day. That's right. crazy. The paperwork was signed. Yeah, yeah. typically you know? they're so, like, no, no. You're, yeah, you're my mine. name was so, on yeah, it. Yeah. So for them to even let me do that, I was like, Oof, thank goodness that happened. You know, mm-hmm. but, right. but there was some back and forth. And still today, I'm like, my life would be so different if I would have stayed oh, yeah. in and I would have went that route. But I have no regrets whatsoever. Let A lot of lessons learned, but yeah. no regrets whatsoever. Nice. That's awesome. I'm happy she didn't take it. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's interesting because like knowing people who are in the military, active duty or like reservist, there's always someone who's like, if I had met you when you were in, we, we wouldn't be where we are. Yeah. And yeah. it's, it's good for you to know like, Hey, you know, like this was a good decision t- that affected where I am currently, I would not be here 
affecting and helping people and being able to hold space for yeah. those presently. Yeah, and that's uh, that's a lot True. of what keeps me going too is those those people knowing how hard my transition was and having Marines below me or my my subordinates and even my higher ups even to see them struggling when they're in and when right. they get out. That's where I found found and find right now my purpose because some people don't change or it takes longer for them to change mm-hmm. to so to be able to be that person that bridges the gap a little bit and breaks down those walls or either at least holds the space that can ask the right questions to break down those walls that's yeah that that's the reason why I keep doing this and this is the we need it yes yeah. we need it I think Definitely. the importance yeah. of her gap that she fills too it's not just from the military over it's also from the other side right to understanding where people can understand people that come from there yeah so it, i think like civilians that you know don't really understand the military aspect of what that is whenever she kind of comes and meets people she's able to educate and able to help people understand that so yeah bridging the gap goes both ways right. oh, you can sure. meet people that are very closed off and that do control a space yeah mm-hmm. but you have to see them for where they're at and where they've been and navigate being the person in the middle and seeing being that observer and trying to speak on it to both right. sides is it's challenging it's oh, very challenging sure. it's, it's but it's me a lot. it's fulfilling it's helped me appreciate a lot of life about mm-hmm. like you know what all we have small small things right. and big picture wise like you know some of these things that we worry about and that we're distracted by are very small in comparison right. to what life is about yes. so I think with her background and where she's been, it's able to unveil some of those type of things to people that are both in the military and in civilian, you know, that have not experienced the military life. So mm-hmm. yeah. I think it's a whole new appreciation people yeah. like I have and some people should take on to life as well. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Yeah. I will say you mentioned this earlier about like knowing good leaders. Mm-hmm. And I feel like you were one of those I, obviously, I didn't know you back then, but you seem like a good leader, like someone who is, to me, like a good leader is one who's going to allow you to grow and lead you, but they're not going to like drag you along if that's not what you want. Mm-hmm. And I feel like you, especially like with yoga, that's something that like you lead the class and you 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 show them what they're supposed to be doing, but you're also letting them feel that, mm-hmm. correct? You have to give your student credit. Yeah. Right. And when I say that, when you give your student credit, it's allowing them to to navigate, but giving them the space to figure things out on their own. So I may have a message in the beginning. I may have a message in the end, Mm -hmm. but I leave gaps Mm -hmm. for them to interpret it how they need to. And I think that's what a good leader does. They don't do micromanaging. They don't make you do the work, do the work. Like I said before, pain recognizes pain. Mm. And we used to do shots to this, this saying, right? In the military, it was, I'm never above you. I'm never below you, but I'm right here with you. And so now I kind of, I use that not only in my, my daily life, my, my teaching of yoga, but the slogan for the, the job that I have for the hospital that I work for is Cone Health right here with you. Like we're right here with you. And mm, so right. if that isn't synchronicity, you know? Yes. Yeah. 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 I never thought of like, I was sitting there and I'm at a point in my life. I'm like, do I want to stay where I'm at? Do I want to go do something leading? And I had a guy randomly come in the store and he was one of, he was a sergeant in my, because I was in the National Guard. He was a sergeant when I was in. And I was like, you are the right leader. Like he's out, he's done doing it. But he still was like, hey, have you done your VA stuff? We need to sit down. We need to take care of this. I was like, no, I haven't done that. I, I'm i doing other stuff. He's like, no, no, we're, we're going to help you. And I was like, that's the kind of leader, like even outside of life, like this is what your job is. They're still worrying about you outside of it, mm-hmm. trying to help grow and get you to where you need to be to get over that pain that you, that you picked up. Mm-hmm. Like everyone picks up something. But like you said, being able to take a little bit off your shoulder. Yeah, I feel like some people compartmentalize so much. Mm -hmm. Again, like I was talking about the, I have my organization, my business side of me, and then I have this passion project. But when you compartmentalize so much, 
and you don't blend them together to really go full in, like all, all of you, mm-hmm. all of your drive into one, one passion, um, I, f- I feel like you're not really in it. You're not, you're mm-hmm. having to be two yeah. different people. Yeah. And as a Gemini, and you're a Gemini as too. <laughs> it's very <laughs> fitting that I'm these two people right now. But <laughs> what's so beautiful is when they do mesh together and you can be this person, you're not fit. You are faking it till you make it right. Mm-hmm. But when you make it, you're blending them together and you are in your job, in your purpose. You've aligned with where you're supposed to be and you can genuinely care about people and give more to others then not that you should give more to others than you give to yourself, but you, you move with that flow of life. I can right. support myself and I can go back and I can hermit and work on me. Mm-hmm. And then I can also step off the mat and I can go help you. Mm, right. Yeah. I've kind of noticed that too, because this is a big portion of my passion project. Right. And then I have my business side and I've noticed that when I was completely separating them and this is, I have a new coach now who was kind of helping put it both together, but he was like, you have them so separate right now Mm -hmm. that you're trying to give all of you to both of those and your family. He was like, there's only one of you and you're trying to give three of you. It's not going to help. He was like, so until you can find a way to put it all together where there's a synchronicity is that's the point where it's going to all come together and you'll be able to be those three people in one. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's really interesting and a good, good point to that too. And I, over, over the past week, I, I had someone share a podcast with me, Ben Dial, maybe? Ben Dial? Hmm. He's a, a mindset mentor, one of the many mindset mentors out there. He gives five hobbies that you need to have to have change in your life, big change. Okay. And I'm going to try to remember him. There's, you need to have one to make money, to bring income. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, you need another one to live a healthy lifestyle, to stay in shape. Mm-hmm. Um, You need another hobby to work on your intellect and your knowledge and then another for your psychology to work on your mindset and and improve where you are psychologically in that regard. Mm -hmm. And there's another one. I don't know the other one. I had some notes I was going to bring up because I knew I could remember all five. But I honestly think there's six. I think there's when you can incorporate all five of those hobbies and you can help others while doing so, that's where your life is going to come full circle and you're going to mesh and it's going to be beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I have, I think I've seen that on social media yes, or something too. Yes. I was like, yeah, so I, I do like remember Catherine hearing about that. Sometime. I think she actually sent it to me now that I think about it. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember I like the other yeah. one. I, I will remember it though. I feel like it was yeah. the passion yeah. project, like a side project. Creative outlet. Did I say that yeah, one? That's right. uh, creative yeah. outlet. Okay. One to make money, one to keep healthy and in shape. One creative outlet. Beautiful. Of course, the creative person is going to tell me that. Right. <laughs> yeah. One to work on your intellect and your knowledge. And then the last one, somewhere you can improve your psychology and work on you, right? That spiritual right. aspect. Yeah. So did the yoga come before or after the military? After. After. Yeah, I was uh, very much so into movement, motocross, working on me, just being strong, right? Physically Mm -hmm. strong. And so all of that and then bodybuilding while I was in, I got my certified personal trainer Mm. when I had to choose what next and I was getting out, decided to go get my my certified personal trainer certification and then move back home with that in in hopes that I was just going to do something with movement while I support my son. Right. And so the yoga came after that. I was like, something's missing. Like I have all this energy and I love going to the gym, but I'm like, I I took a deep dive. I was like, is this, is this from an ego perspective Mm -hmm. or what's happening here? Like, cause I was getting really angry too in the gym. I don't know if you've had those days where you have your phone and the wrong song plays and you just throw it across (laughs) the gym. That has happened to me (laughs) where I was like, I am over this. And I think a lot of it was just me not being in the right mindset but when mm-hmm. I found yoga and, de- and now do both, more of the, the weightlifting and yoga together, mm-hmm. it gives me more of a balance. Mm. And I, f- I feel like that works best for me. It's not for everyone, but it works best for me. Yeah, I've noticed too, so I was doing a lot of weightlifting before. And then I started going to my PT because I got injured because I wasn't doing any type of yoga stretching. or stretching or anything mobility wise that I should have been doing. Mm. And I was like, okay, I need to be doing this. So I did that for over a year and then I got out of it again because I was feeling better. So I was like back to the heavy weights again. And then I just noticed my mobility going down and I was starting to have some of those smaller things creep back in. I'm like, isn't that interesting that once I stopped doing those, I started getting the mobility like limited 
But then that also made me start feeling worse, Mm -hmm. not just physically, but mentally too, because I wasn't moving the same. And I'm like, that's crazy how those two pieces connect that you're, and I already knew that like my physical body and your mental is connected, but I didn't know it went as far as the mobility of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what like really is like opened my mind. Like, okay, I need to start getting back into this. And I was excited that that I already had you on the books because I was like, I need to go and start (laughs) doing something again. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Please do. Huge yoga advocate. Weightlifting. Yes, of course too, but huge yoga advocate. So yeah, come join, come join us anytime. That'd be great. So where do you practice yoga? Like, where do I practice? So where do you, okay, I, the wrong question. Where do you teach yoga? Okay. okay. I'll actually answer your first one. Okay. Where do I practice? I practice all the time. Yoga is a mindset. Yoga is mm. a way of living. It is mm-hmm. the union of breath with body and mindset. It is an all day thing. It is me taking that pause before I chop off my husband's head, you know, with words. So I practice it every single day, but mostly the physical aspect, my practice happens in the gym. I love the gym. It's where I feel at home. That turf, the nice turf over there, I have a sense of solitude and I can escape my home office. I can escape Mm -hmm. things that are happening, all my responsibilities, and I can go to the gym and practice Mm. my my flow. I teach over at Yoga Salt. So Yoga Salt of Wilmington down near Satellite. I teach there. The myofascial release okay. class that I do is called Release and Restore. That's on a Monday, Monday night. And then the peer yoga during the warm months on Fridays. Yeah. I'm there from 7.30 to 8.30. And if you have not been to the peer yoga, it is an incredible experience. It is so it beautiful. Really is. We follow, and by we, I follow, apparently, a lot of people who go to that. And mm-hmm. I was like, first off, that's really early for, for me. And I, I was like, that's an excuse. Like, I'm, I'm always making an excuse. I'm like, oh, I don't want to go to yoga. Or I don't want to do this because it's too early. And then I look and I'm like, it's 730, though. Like, the sun rises right now at, like, 6. six yeah. Like, you can get up, you can do it, you can come back home. So you have a whole day ahead of you. And mm-hmm. parking is free at 730 yeah, to 830. The yes. 9 o'clock class parking is not free. And then Oceanic likes to close their, their parking, too. Right. But the 730 to 830 class, there actually is an earlier one. Oh, and the sunrise, sunrise yoga, which, love it. It's probably so beautiful, but we do wake up early. Like, we're 5.30, 6.30, sometimes 7 o'clock, but 5.30 people. Mm-hmm. And so 7.30 works well for us in our schedule, right. yeah. but it could be earlier. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yes, it's just an excuse, but it always could be earlier. And then you have your whole day ahead of yes. you. See, yeah. I don't know why. I've always been a, like, an evening person. Yeah. I always joke with, like... I was born dead middle of the day, like 1130 something or 11, like middle of the day. And so like I'll wake up early. I'll take a nap. I'll be really rejuvenated. I can take another nap and then go crazy all night. But I always work out at night. Like if I'm working out at night, I am like perfect. Mm -hmm. But somehow every time I work out in the morning, I'm like dead for the rest of the day oh yeah that definitely happens there's like, definitely uh-huh. a, a crash period it, a lot of it i've noticed for myself because i've been cutting things out just to like experiment you know yeah. on my body right. like what happens if i cut out coffee what if i don't use caffeine at all what if i have an energy drink here or food there mm-hmm. i've noticed that my crash usually comes from what i'm eating like 100 right. percent. Mm-hmm. i can wake up early and go to the gym and if i'm eating bad or i have coffee or something afterwards because i'm trying to get in my work mode then I'll crash at 2 p.m., 3 p.m., and then I'm yeah. pretty much done for the day. And since he has music events at night, that's not possible for me. So, like, I'm trying yeah. to experiment with all of this. And I can't work out at night just because then I have so much energy at night. Mm. And I don't need all the energy if I need You're to go to bed to by yeah. 2, mm, right. 2 a.m. to wake up at 5.30. This is a fun <laughs> schedule we have. We have a great schedule. It's <laughs> wonderful. We make it work. Yeah, but I, I found out just experimenting with uh, your schedule, your routine, and, like, what you eat, what you mm-hmm. do, how you move your body is very important, too. So it's very all about true. trying new things. Yeah. I'm down for it. My <laughs> wife does hate it, though. Like, I will work. <laughs> we did 75 hard which we're looking into doing again this year. And I would always, I would come home, do a workout, go eat, sit there, like hang out, and then do another workout while she's like getting ready for bed. And I could come home and be out in like 30 minutes. And she's like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I was like, I guess, well, by workout, I mean, I just walk around my neighborhood for like 45 minutes. But it is the middle of the night and me running is not always the best thing. 
It's not great for my knees. Right. No. I know. I, I love, I used Horrible. to love to run. Mm-hmm. It's just not good for my knees. No. I'd be careful with my low back. I'm getting old. I'm yeah, right. <laughs> it doesn't matter how much yoga you do, how much working out you Maybe do. We're going to be. Physical therapy or a chiropractor, you know, sh- stretch yeah. it out. Do what? Have you combined your physical therapy or chiropractor with yoga? I don't go to the chiropractor. I do a lot of a lot of stretching. Yeah. I teach yoga, so I work right. on the connective tissues quite mm-hmm. a bit, especially with my fascial release. And you have to work on your stabilization muscles just as much as your major muscles. Yeah. And so, making sure that you don't neglect certain areas of the body is very important. And that that's flexion and tension. That's flexibility, and then also the contracting of the muscles too for growth. So they work hand in hand, and you have to do both. I've heard of myofascial release multiple times, and I kind of get the gist of what it is but can you go in a little bit deeper of what to expect sure sure myofascial release comes in uh very different uh fashions different different forms and you can have a massage that's myofascial release of someone that works specifically on your body you can use the foam roller or you can use golf balls or tennis balls and that's what i do in my class i don't bring Uh, foam rollers out i would love to (laughs) but in the studio that i work for we're using just golf balls and tennis balls and, and you can even use like the edge of your block even for some parts of your neck, mm. but you're targeting the connective tissues in the body. And this is where water moves through the body to make you more mobile and fluid and stay young, right? And yeah. if, you, if you're fluid in the body, you're going to stay young. If you're tight and you have anxiety, you're going to hold stuff in. If you're holding pain or injuries, I mean, you're going to hold stuff and that's going to get stored in you. What myofascial release does is it targets those connective tissues. It opens up space, and it is painful. It can be painful, but you learn to breathe with that, just like you would breathe in your weightlifting. Right. Um, breathe while you're running or yeah. walking down the road. You're breathing a certain way to create space, and once you promote that openness, that crea- creation of the space, you're also allowing water to move through your body and restore. It is restoring, and so some people do get sick afterwards. Some people... Forget to hydrate. It's very important to hydrate the body because you're moving things through in a very right. weird way. You may come out with certain emotions um, after one of your myofascial release class that you don't know what to do with. So mm-hmm. just recognizing again where you're at and um, continuing to do it is the, the important part. It's just keeping it as a regular practice, but listening to your body. Right. Like if you have an yeah. injury, you shouldn't be doing myofascial release right on top of it. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just listen to your body. Be very gentle. Yeah. Because I've heard of it more of like in the um, massage way. Because like when I was going to PT, they would do some of that too. And I was like, I don't completely know what you're doing, but it works. So I mean, keep yeah. keep at it. So <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it feels great too. Yeah. 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 No, I asked about like combining like PT and all that with yoga because I have back issues. And I was like, oh, I wonder if you do, if you combine things or like what would be like a good balance. But yes. it makes sense. There are certain things. There's different areas of your body that is probably tight that your low back or your upper back whatever part of your back that's hurting that it's actually somewhere completely different in your body it could be your shoulders Mm -hmm. or the way you carry yourself in the hips it could be your knees you have like a bad knee or you're tight in your it band or something and that could in fact that could impact your low back that could impact the way you carry your posture everything so myofascial release long as you understand why you're targeting a certain area you can essentially work on the parts that don't feel so great that mm. maybe that you're avoiding working out. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I just thought it was because of the stress and stupid people. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> <laughs> See, if you laugh. I, I always thought it was a joke. And then I realized like the correlation of like when my, like my back would just start hurting so bad. And I look back, I'm like, Oh, it's because someone was acting stupid. They weren't doing this. And I was like, that I just need to release some of that stress. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I should probably just start trying some yoga. Yeah, try some yoga. Big advocate over here. Big advocate. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see you. 7.30. Next Friday? Friday? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. In the Do you morning. have to pay for it or just show up? You, you can salt. join online, the Yoga Salt Wilmington online. Uh, you can find the peer classes. They're only $10. So usually you oh. go to a yoga class around here. Yeah. It's going to be 18 to $20 for yoga class, just like it would be any kind of, like, group class. Um that you would find but ten dollars on the pier is incredible you can just walk up pay cash you can pay online i i I have been telling people more recently to go ahead and sign up online because those classes on fridays can get really full Mm, and to have you know 50 people 60 people out on the pier that can be that can be a lot 
to hold space for people, that can be a lot, um, just speaking as a teacher. But just sign up online early. That go ahead and re- like reserves your spot, and you don't have to worry about paying cash and dealing with all that while you're trying to relax yeah, on right. the pier. Yeah. Huh. Keep an eye out for yeah. it. So combining your business and your passion project, uh, what would success look like for you besides financially? Yeah, the success to me is... Um, is not really about finding happiness. Uh, it's more, because happiness is fleeting. You know, mm-hmm. happiness, again, is, it's a moment. And, in, right. you know, what comes up comes down and what's down always comes up. So mm-hmm. it's not really about finding happiness. I think success is more about finding the balance right. and being content with where you are. And, yes, have big, big dreams, big goals, but find the balance in life where you can support yourself, support your family, and then so much that you can support other people too. And that's, right. that's no, essentially that. going to bring that happiness. Although it may be in waves, that, that to me is what success is. Nice. Yeah. Mm. yeah, well, building off of her, I, I agree with that. I think building a, an experience that people are going to help connect with and ultimately find, find the, the feeling of not being lonely, yeah. feeling, you know, trying to shed away those layers of fear, self-doubt, of, you know, things that eat away our soul. I think finding the space, you know, creating safe spaces and doing that through our events that we do together, Kayla and I, and through the concerts and things that I've been a part of, creating those safe spaces is really important to me. And I think having that be a success to me is is ultimately my goal, is to have those people enjoy it, but also protect it and bring bring the best energy to the table for people to mm. appreciate and to leave feeling fuller than they were when they right. came to that experience event whatever it may be yeah I think making them feel welcome i think that right. is one of the best feelings if I, I tend to gravitate towards the awkward gravitate towards the weirdos <laughs> yeah. and i love the weirdos <laughs> I, i've had someone come up to me recently and just thank me like thank you for like accepting me because i'm so socially awkward and i'm like dude <laughs> i'm so awkward and weird so like this is fun for me like this yeah. is great like yeah. you're my people and so having people just saying thank you, it, it can mean a lot. Like just having that gratitude shown back to you. Again, receiving that love, that is that yeah. is what success is. Giving nice. and receiving. Yeah. So since you kind of looked forward to what success is, taking a look back real quick, is if you could tell your younger self one thing, what would it be? Oof. Well, I have this tattoo on my feet, and I got it <laughs> while I was in the Marine Corps, and I was young and dumb. And it says, yeah. it's not where you've been. It's where you're going. Yeah. Okay. So I would tell my younger self just to keep that in mind every single day. It is not where you've been. People have an ugly past. People mm-hmm. make bad decisions. People do change. And some people don't believe in change. Don't people, there's people out there that believe that a person will never change. Mm-hmm. But yeah. when you start believing in people and you show them that change is possible, just by being the example, that alone is right. proof and it gives them permission to change. Yeah. Like, look, I, I made this huge change in my life and I'm stepping forward and I'm, I'm a new person and I can feel it. And having that as your testimony, having that as, you know, a walking, walking proof of who you are, mm-hmm. it really does give people permission. And so, yeah, I would tell my younger self, girl, you are going to change so much. Just be comfortable with where you are and, you know, live it up and keep going. I love it. Nice. Yeah, I was actually just talking about that two days ago as well, too, especially in the world that we live in now. There's so many people out there that give zero grace. And they'll look back and be like, look what this person did 40 years ago. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay. Cancel sure, culture. Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. like, I'm sure they've changed three times at least mm-hmm. <laughs> amongst that time. Like, I know yeah. I've changed a lot just in the last five years, mm-hmm. yeah. let alone when I was 60, what I did 40 years ago. That's so true. Yeah, for me, I think building off what she said also is, you know, finding comfort in the discomfort, Mm. you know, trying to find those vulnerable places where you may not know at the time that this is going to be good for you, but in those discomfort, you know, discomfortable places, it causes growth, it causes change, it causes you to be challenged, you know, trying to find that space where you're okay with it and also able to learn from that. I think I would tell my my younger self, like, it's okay, like, if, if things are challenging, okay if things get hard just know that like on the other side there's healing there's going to be comfort within that discomfort and 
um, Kayla and I have found discomfort within our our experience of being with each other, but we've also yeah. found solace and gratitude in, within the chaos. Um, yeah, relationships are hard. <laughs> Let's just throw that out there. Relationships exactly. are really <laughs> hard. We're, we're not going to go too deep in our relationships. No, right. Right. <laughs> relationships are hard. We're if both someone, married. We yeah. understand. Yeah. If, someone <laughs> said, yeah, yeah. if you say a relationship is easy, you're not doing it right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> You're not growing. You're not. There's. It's all about that's, giving grace. Yeah. It yeah. is. It is giving grace and seeing each other for for who they they really are and yeah. believing in change, mm-hmm. like believing in change and commitment and sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. The title of our third episode that we've ever had was "Finding Comfort in Discomfort." Too. Yes, so, I love that. Yeah. I, I teach on that all the time, it. and I love <laughs> that. Yeah. I didn't yeah. steal it from you guys. Uh, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm sure we stole it from someone else. Yeah. So. Yeah, totally. Everything's stolen. Exactly. Everything is stolen. Yeah, we we all stand on the shoulders of giants these days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do have one thing that actually, one quote that my uncle, he's a pastor. He does yeah. uh, Harvest World Outreach in, in uh, Jamestown area in Green, er, uh, near yeah. Greensboro. But there was one, one quote he said during a, a sermon, and it was, never settle with your present level. I that that know. there really hit me at the right time in my life where I was like, oh, wow, really profound words for me that, you know, we all have those moments. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The, the light bulb go, oh, goes off. Um, but that really it struck, a, struck a nerve with me, and I was like, wow, I never want to sit in comfort and feel like I'm okay in that comfort. I want to yeah. push and live life yeah. to the fullest. I want to experience everything there is to live out of what we're doing. Yeah. And, like, sitting here talking with y'all and, like, doing this – I, I didn't know I was going to be on here. It kind of made no. me yeah. uncomfortable <laughs> even saying yes in a way. I was like, oh, gosh, am I, I don't even know what I'm going to say. But but doing this, it helps helps you grow, helps you you know learn how to love yourself a little bit more. Yeah. And, um, and being content. Yeah. Being content is very different than um, being comfortable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So content with where you are no matter what happens is one thing. But that comfort level, mm-hmm. right, it's like I could always be better. I could always yeah. do better. And – that's where you don't want to stay comfortable because when you when you find you know comfortability you're also getting lazy yes yeah. Um, yeah. and you don't want to get lazy you want to put yourself in uncomfortable situations again and again and again and again and that's how you grow yeah, yeah very different from contentment hmm. yeah we had on coach reggie over a year ago now and his favorite quote in the same realm because he works with a lot of business owners is the curse of the fat and happy because mm-hmm. they all have these goals, and that's the reason why they're working with them. And they hit yeah. something that wasn't their goal, but they're like, "Yeah, I think I'm pretty happy where I'm at here. Why do I need to push any harder to get there? Yeah. And he was like, because you're not going to be happy in the long run and content yeah. with where you're at because you had this goal, and you're going to know you fell short when you know you could have hit it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So. And the people that do hit, you know, maybe their dream is to have a big house and have money and all these things, but you can still f- be lonely in that big house. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so what, what is your goal? Is your goal to have all that? What, that's where the deep dive comes in. Like, right. do you, do you want, do you want money over love? But I'm, when you choose love over everything, that's, that's the real magic. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It goes into, I have a mindset coach and what he's always said too. It's not, your why and purpose is always important, but a lot of people's whys tend to be that big house or whatever the thing is. Mm -hmm. But he always talks about your burn. It's that underlying purpose of why you do it every single day, why you're trying to accomplish that why. And that's what actually is the catalyst that gets you out of that bed. I love that. I love that. Yeah. I taught a, taught a yoga class. I, I was like a guest speaker for a teacher training for Yoga Salt, mm-hmm. and I taught on finding your why. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was about a year ago. And my why, is it's a very burning passion why, but I like to keep my, my opposite side of that. You know, what, what, what am I looking for? I like to keep that small. Like, right. I don't need much. I don't need a big house. Like, I'm not going to clean that thing. <laughs> right. I don't need a lot of no. money. <laughs> I, want, I want it very minimal and... And it just works. Things just work out. When you have that mindset, things just work out. Like you don't need to chase after something. Just like we didn't, we didn't push into this project. Mm -hmm. We didn't push into this dream or this relationships. Honestly, we, we manifested it. We prayed into it and it just happened. And like, how, how am I here today? How am I teaching yoga? How am I in Wilmington? How am I sitting up here with you guys? I don't know, but I feel like I, it it came to me. Mm -hmm. I didn't push for it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. 
I think she's pushed a little bit for it. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little. There, there's always not, a not little push that she's that pushed or she did. Anyways. <laughs> you were my push. There we go. Yeah, I'll give it to you. Okay. <laughs> you have to have someone that believes in you, right? You, you have you to go. have someone believes in you, and that's going to give you the push. It takes one compliment, guys. One. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> so, where can people follow this project and like what you guys are putting out there, yeah. or like show up and attend it? Yeah, I did mention the Create Music mm-hmm. Art. It's where he first started his Create business. That's going to be on Instagram. He also has CreateMusicArt.com. But the new project that we are working on together, it stems from your electric enclave business. Yeah. So electric enclave are the, the new electronic music events. You have house music, bass, every, everything electronic right. in that realm mm-hmm. around town. Electric enclave is how you can find them on Instagram. I think you have your website up now, too. We just launched our website, electriconclavepresents.com. Okay. And we're on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Sweet. And also YouTube. So we're nice. going to be launching some live sets here soon. On that. Very good. And our frequency yoga that we're starting this Tuesday, we are doing that at Freya's house every uh, Tuesday yeah. this right. month from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. And then it will be evolving. It'll change. We have some other locations that we're looking at, too. So that's for this month. Ne- next month could be completely different. Mm. But I, I'm on Instagram as well. People can follow me, Kayla Marie Coyne. And then I also go by Maureen Ganyogi okay. on, on yeah. Instagram nice. as well. Yeah. And if, yeah, if anyone wants to follow me, I'm at John Allen Coin, and that's about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's <Perfect>. you. That's <laughs> <me>. <laughs> well, we'll have your info in the show notes okay. below. Yeah. So, if you're watching us on YouTube, it's it's in the link down there. Yeah, somewhere down there. <laughs> I, don't, I don't exactly know. We don't put them up here because that's too much work. But thank you guys for sh- showing up. Yeah, and thank like, you so much for having us. I know it was us. a little awkward. It's not something that you're used to doing yet, but thank you for coming. Yeah, yeah thank great. you for thank you for challenging us, getting out of our comfort zone, right? Exactly. Thank you so much and trying new things, and we appreciate. Thank you. Sounds good. Yeah, appreciate thanks for having right. me. Thank yeah. you guys. Yeah. Of course, Cheers. we'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Peace. So wait, I did have a real question for you. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you do in the Marine Corps? What did I do in the Marine Corps? Okay, so I'm going to tell you I was really bad at my job. (laughs) (laughs) They still wanted me. I don't know why. (laughs) But I was really bad at my job. I did IT, like communications. And that's kind of what I do now. The data, the the numbers, all of it. But I... (laughs) I'm going to say that I made 18-year-old boys cry. (laughs) I ran the PT. I did physical training. I did all of that. Um, Marched the platoon. I did the platoon sergeant duties. And that's what I was good at. The platoon sergeant? I feel like that's like, I, I don't understand the ranks in the Marine Corps. So. It's different. Every Yeah, every branch right. is a little different. Yeah. But yeah, you have leadership roles that start with like a corporal and a sergeant. Um, those are E3, uh, actually e, E4 and E5. But um, after that, you go into your staff sergeant, your gunny and your higher ups. But yeah, I, I took more of a leadership role mm. and I, I loved it. But yeah, again, very different person back then than I am now. Yeah, I was just trying to connect how you ended up in IT. Yep, that's exactly how. Okay. Yeah. That's too funny. <laughs> Very funny. She can still make 30-year-old men cry, too. Oh, it's not well. just 18-year-olds. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it hasn't stopped. Don't ask, <laughs> don't ask me how I I do know. breathe. I breathe through it and I pause. <laughs> I, can, I can still make it happen. I'll get a tear or two. Right. Yeah, in yoga. Chair pose. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All that. Sure. Yeah. Love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>